I learned don't work for the boss, be the boss. And now I teach, you know, like my child, work with the boss long enough to learn how to do what he does and then become better than him. Wherever you feel fear, that's where you've got to become the person that will attract the number 200 different cognitive bias. The real work in any business is thinking. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the FLW Podcast. My name is Cody DeGraff, and I'm here with my co-host, Gabriel Klingman. What is up, everybody? Welcome to the show. Today, we have Darla. This is going to be a blast. Just a quick reminder, hit that subscribe button. It would mean the world to us. Back to you, Code. Awesome. And guys, and like Gabe said, we are so excited to have Darla DeGrandi with us today on the call. And uh, just a little bit about this amazing woman. She was a former business owner in the cosmology world, uh, basically reinventing it to the max. Uh, she was one of the top 100 fastest growing hair salon businesses, multiple businesses in the world, which I cannot wait to hear more about that. And uh, in addition to that, she ended up shifting her focus to having um, so much tremendous success in the network marketing industry. So really excited to hear about it. And guys, we're also going to be talking about how she is a co-author of this amazing book called Momentum Makers um, and phenomenal chapter that she wrote in that. So Darla, thank you so much for being on the call today. How are you doing? I am amazing, and thanks for having me. I love your guys' energy. <laughs> oh, yeah, we got to have good energy. So oh, yes. this is what it's all about. Come on. <laughs> so we like to start off the show with uh, just like a, we call, I call it the five random, where we basically ask you five very random questions, have absolutely nothing to do with the, the real questions, but just a fun little icebreaker. So you ready to do this? I'm ready. Fire away. All right. So if you could spend time with any person in the world, past, present, or future, what would that, who would that person be? Oh, that's a really great question. And what comes to my mind is Elvis Presley or Marilyn mm -hmm. Monroe. <laughs> that's, oh, that's a hard one. Oh, man. That's a hard one. That's that would be so much fun. Wouldn't uh, it, though? Just yes. to hear about oh what did God. they do really behind the scenes. <laughs> that would be fantastic. Um, I'd probably, I'd probably pick Elvis. That's funny. Um, <laughs> if you could ask God any question, what would it be? Why did I get blessed with such an amazing life? Wow. I have, I have, I am spirit led. And when you hear my story, it's going to throw chills back at you for that question. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Uh, if you had the choice, would you have the ability to fly or be invisible? Ooh, I would say be invisible. Interesting. Ooh. Yes. Okay. Okay. I've, I've already flown. I haven't been invisible. <laughs> <laughs> no, she has Touché. a good point. Touché. She has a very good point. Um, if you could, so number four, if you could memorize an entire book word for word, which book would it be? Mm. When I read this question, I was stumped. I'm like, how am I supposed to come up with that? That'd well, be crazy. automatically you go straight to the Bible. And then <laughs> yeah. I, I have memorized the entire book, The Secret. And mm. I've memorized it. I rewrote it. I wrote every line. I rewrote it till I could memorize it. I also memorized wow. the song from Sugar Hill Gang, the hip to the hop to the hip to the hip <laughs> <laughs> when I was a kid. That's amazing. <laughs> that is fantastic. <laughs> you got I think me I might there. actually take your advice on that. Um, your unintentional advice on memorizing the secret. That is truly amazing. That's oh, a, I've, that's it changed idea. my life. Mm -hmm. All right. So the final question, here we go. So if you had to go to war, would you go to combat with a dragon or would you go to combat with a Tyrannosaurus Rex? Oh, gosh. I love that They're one. They're both the same in my mind. I know. One can fly. I, I don't know. Oh, can it? I don't even know. Um, I'm not a gamer or into yeah. Lord of the Rings or whatever those <laughs> shows are. Um, Tyrannosaurus Rex. This one's going to make your kids proud, I'm sure. <laughs> right. Tyrannosaurus Rex. I don't know. There Perfect. You go. All in. Perfect. So uh with something you teased us a little earlier on with your story, I want to dive right in there. That's what I want to start. So what is your story? Can you share a little bit about that? Well, do you want the three minute, 30 minute or three hour version? <laughs> oh, personally, I want the I three hours, three, right? I personally, yeah. I want the three hours, but let's start with the three minute. We can go more off camera after. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I didn't fit in the box as a young kid. I didn't do well in school. So I am what all these kids are in today's worlds work going to school at home back then, you know, dropping out of high school to do it and finishing in independent studies is what it was back then. And mm -hmm. I just wanted to get on with life. And so I wasn't cut out for college. So my mom said, you know, you got to get a trade skill. If you're not going to go get a degree, you got to get a trade skill. So mm -hmm. 
right? That's how I ended up in the beauty industry. And I was very fortunate when I was young to have some good mentors that were wealthy, really wealthy. And I come from the typical rich dad, poor dad story where my parents divorced when I was nine and I was raised by mom and this was before child support. So mom worked all the time and I was the baby. So I was raised at daycare. And so I got taken under the wing by uh, f good friends that I had met in school who happened to be really wealthy and I got to stay at their house a lot. And so I learned what it was like to have present parents, mm -hmm. maids, drive in limousines, be on the VIP lists at restaurants. When you walked in, everybody knew your name. You know, I got to have that life and then I got to have the other life. And so they instilled in me something that stuck when I was older. And I learned, don't work for the boss, be the boss, work mm. for the boss. And now I teach, you know, like my child, work for the boss long enough to learn how to do what he does and then become better than him. Yeah. And so I went to beauty school and right out of school and got my first job and quickly learned that I needed to be like the boss instead of like him. And so I convinced the hardest working person there to go into business with me. She, she didn't want to do it, but I got us fired. So she had no choice. <laughs> so awesome. we went into business together and then the rest is history. Nine years wow. into that relationship, I bought her out and I just happened to be in the right industry at the right time mm -hmm. when the day spa boom came and I was the first day spa mm -hmm. in our city, not connected to a resort like the Ritz Carlton wow. to open. And I rode that wave and grew wow. to the top 200 fastest growing salons in the country and That's rode that wave for a long time. Wow. That's yeah. crazy. That's, That's the very short story. <laughs> yeah, no. And then so, and then from there you transitioned into network marketing. And what was that experience like for you? It was kind of from there. I, I, I reinvented the salon industry by creating the first hair spa and through day spas. And then that led me into becoming a salon consultant. And I used to fly around the country teaching salons how to become high-end salons. So wow. I started the coaching business really young. And then um, the crash of 08 came and we were 100% debt free, living in our dream house, doing $3 million a year, had 49 employees, and we were on our fifth location and had did everything right mm. and had all the boats and toys and you name it. And then came the crash of 08. Oh, and yeah. our clientele got hit first because mm -hmm. our people were paying $500 to get your hair cut and colored. It was nothing to drop that. And so... I'll never forget the day. It was March 26th of 2008. I'm sitting at my desk and I've got all my camera monitors like I do here, but except for on my monitors was my salons, you know, all the different wow. rooms and stuff. And for four months, I had had this local businessman that had been driving me crazy to take a look at a business opportunity. And I kept blowing him off because I thought he was trying to pitch me Amway. And there's nothing wrong with Amway. It was my perception back then of Amway. Right. I was biggest skeptic to network marketing because I was ignorant to network marketing. I didn't even know what mm. it was. Mm. I had a false perception. And I used to tell people to stay away from those things, that they're scams and you're going to ruin all your friendships and lose all your money and people go to jail for those things. I was that person. And so this guy was relentless and like in all of the network marketing coaching, be per persistent, insistent, and consistent. This guy was that. And mm -hmm. so he didn't stop. Every week he would come in and say, I need 30 minutes. And I would say, just tell me what it's about. And he would say, I need to show you. I can't tell you. And he, <laughs> I, I had labeled him my stalker. You know, God, this guy won't leave me alone, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I, that prior Sunday in church, I don't know if you guys know the story of the big flood, but it's when there's a flood and they come to rescue the people and they say, no, God's going to save me. And they send them away. And then finally the people die and they go to heaven and they say, God, why didn't you save me? And God says, who do you think sent the boat, the plane and the helicopter? Mm -hmm. And so that story I heard that Sunday at church. And then I'm sitting at my desk on March 26th of 2008. And I get a call from the bank and the bank that's the day the banking industry crashed yeah, where yeah. anybody that had a million dollars or more in the bank had a hundred thousand dollar credit line. Well, yeah. that was the day they called to pull back all the credit lines. Mm -hmm. And so they called to tell me I was $20,000 overdrawn in my payroll account, which was $55,000 every two weeks. And I said, I know, go ahead, cover it. I'll cover it. And they said, sorry, Darla, we can't. We got, it's not just you, it's everyone. We had to pull back the credit lines. And so I look in my monitor and that guy is my stalker standing in the lobby that day. And for no a split second, <laughs> I said, dude, you picked the worst day to come in here and try wow. and pitch me your deal again. And mm. a little voice said, 
why won't you listen? Wow. So I truly believe it was a God thing because I had been praying so hard. Everybody prays during these times, COVID times right now. Everybody's praying, dear God, please help me find a way to pay my mortgage. I get calls every day. I can't, I've lost my job. I can't find a job. I can't, you know. Yeah. And so I, I just said, hmm, I wonder if this is the boat, the plane, and the, or the helicopter. Mm. I wonder if this is my story, you know. And so by this time, I had convinced my husband that this guy was a stalker trying to pitch me a scam. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I convinced everybody. (laughs) So I went into my husband's office and I said, he was the CFO of the company. And I said, I'm going to go listen to this guy for 30 minutes. He only wants 30 minutes. Blow my phone up at 31 minutes. Call the police. Get me out of there. I'm not getting stuck in some meeting. Yeah. Yeah. And I wiped my tears and I said, okay, I'm going to give you 30 minutes. And I came back two and a half hours later, bouncing off the walls. I didn't understand the thing that I saw. I didn't get any of it. It -hmm. didn't make a bit of sense to me. Still to this day, it was the worst presentation I'd ever seen because he was so nervous that he finally got me, you know? Yeah. And I, before I left, my husband said, I can't believe you're going to do this. We've got to figure out how to cover payroll. I said, I know, but something's telling me to go listen. I need to go settle this voice inside that just spoke to me. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, whatever you do, don't come back and ask me for money. I said, I know, we don't have any. So I came back two and a half hours later. He was so worried because he'd been blowing my phone up for two two hours, two hours. You know, where are you? Do you want me to call the police for real? (laughs) And, uh, And so I said, I need a check. And it's the first time I'd ever asked him for money. And he said, no. I said, yes, I need a check. I'm writing a check. And he's like, it's going to bounce. And I said, I know I'm writing a check Mm -hmm. that we don't have money for, but something's telling me I need to do this. And I held that check in my hand trembling for $720. And I said, okay, Lord, if this is what you're telling me to do, I'm going to do this. And I'm going to take the biggest blind leap of faith, but you have to lead me. Yeah. And I've been led for 12 and a half years through incredible greatness. Wow. That's yeah. amazing. That's so amazing. amazing. Thank you for sharing that. And I have no fear where fear, where faith, faith and fear don't exist. And I knew that. And at the yeah. second I said, lead me, all fear went away. Yeah. And that actually leads me to this next question. It's a perfect segue. We're, you actually talked about this before where you make this shift, um, you know, this faith versus skepticism shift. Can you mm-hmm. just kind of talk about that? Um, because I think that's something everyone struggles with to some yes. degree. And I'm really glad that you're asking me these questions because a lot of people are afraid to talk to people like me. When I went to my first Super Saturday, you know, the big trainings on Saturday where everybody goes to see, you know, the tr- the big yeah. people that yeah. make money. It was my first one that I went to. And when I walked in the room, my clients were in that room and my mm-hmm. clients were coming up to me going, oh my gosh, Darla, who got you? And I'm like, what does that mean? Because still, you got to remember, I don't understand what network marketing is. I had just wrote a hot check that hadn't cleared the bank yet. I'm at my first training two days later because, you know, I want to figure this thing out. I wrote my Mm. check on Thursday, not on that Tuesday. And so um, I'm like, what do you mean? What do you mean? And then it started clicking because I started asking people, you were just in the salon last week. Why didn't you tell me about this? I just saw you the other day. Why haven't you told me you're doing this? And every single one of them said the same thing. We didn't think you needed it. We didn't think you'd be interested. And what it proved now that I understand how this works is in my, in their mind, I was above them on the social economic scale. So they had a preconceived fear of opinion that I didn't need it. And you guys, I'm telling you, there's people that are like the old me out there everywhere. You will not know when they're losing their home till their grass is green and the pool is moldy until they've had to get rid of the gardener because they can't afford the gardener anymore. And they can't afford the pool man. And they're trying to do it themselves. I was still driving around in my beautiful I don't know if it was a BMW or Mercedes at the time, but my beautiful over a thousand dollar car payment car, my husband was driving the Porsche, you know, but they were all late in payments, but people Mm -hmm. didn't know that, you know, Mm -hmm. we were already Mm -hmm. late in our mortgage payment. We'd sold the boat. We'd, you know, just selling things off like crazy. We sold our formal dining ware, the big $20,000, you know, hutch and and custom furniture all Mm -hmm. while we're showing up still wearing our, you know, beautiful clothes looking pretty you got to go talk to people of influence, mm-hmm. especially right now in these times. Mm-hmm. What's happening to these business owner, uh, owners is just heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. And they need a way out. They understand business. But you have to fight the fear to get them to look at what it is that you may not even understand that they understand. Because mm-hmm. it's a totally different level for somebody who understands leverage already or understands how to make millions 
And so I forgot your question. What was your question? I just went off on a passionate. No, I love that. <laughs> yeah, no, that's no, that's totally fine. No, just basically the difference between the the skepticism versus, yes. okay. you know, yeah. The so faith. I, I learned that, that I just was ignorant. I thought I knew I, I was already in my box. I was already at the top of my game. I was already mm. successful. So when people would ask me an opinion on something that I didn't know, of mm. course, naturally, I'm going to give my educated opinion, which was right. from ignorance. So I tell people all the time, don't ask a drunk if you have a drinking problem. Don't ask a divorced person about mm. marriage. If marriage is good, don't ask someone without children about parenting advice. And don't ask somebody who hasn't made millions in network marketing, network marketing advice. Wow. Don't yeah. do it. That's don't good. ask a quitter yeah. about success. Right. Mm-hmm. Don't ask a failure about how to be good at something that they haven't mastered because mm-hmm. they're going to always give you a negative opinion to protect their lack of, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes so perfect. I That's- learned through by going, by reading the books, I immersed myself into personal development, immersed myself. Mm. And just started reading and studying and researching and, and Robert, I'd never read rich dad, poor dad until I got into personal development and then GoPro came out and all these just getting immersed into it and surrounding myself with people that had already made millions because I needed to make millions again. I had Mm. lost my millions. I needed to make it again. And so I wanted to know the only question I asked the person showing me the presentation is, can somebody make $10,000 a month doing this? And he said, yes. I said, do you know somebody that has, and do they have a college degree? Do they have to have any special skills? How fast do the paychecks come? Right. You know, that's all I wanted to know is right. how the mechanics of did the money work. Right. Mm-hmm. That's fantastic. So to go right along with this, um, in your chapter in Momentum Makers, you talk about living the yes life. And I have a feeling this is segueing right into that. So can you explain uh, what that means and how you came to that idea? Yes. So when I was in my salons, I was doing great. I was at the top of my game. I Mm. couldn't charge higher prices. I was already the most expensive salon around, not like a Ritz Carlton, you know, a freestanding salon. I was already at the top of my game and I had no life. I was in those salons all the time. I wasn't able, I have my tombstone in the town that I was in. I've never been anywhere, you know? Mm. And so when we got into network marketing and then it was able to retire us and we were able to buy our life back. The first thing we did was lease a million dollar home on wheels and go for one year unplugged. My husband, wow. my wow. daughter, and I myself. love this so That's much. That's amazing. This is we getting just me so stoked. For a year because we had a yeah. network of people all over the country that were saying, come park at our place, come yeah. to our resort. <laughs> we'll host you what? And I had never been anywhere. My we were like, hey, we can move out of this hell hole. And I can say that because it's 120 degrees in Palm Springs. Right. Where I live. Right. It's very hot like hell. I mm. never knew what it was like to have a summer because we lived it indoors. And so we, and he said, let's move. Okay. Where wow. do you want to move? I don't know. I've never been anywhere. Mm. He's like, <laughs> let's go see what places look like. And I'll never forget the first day I saw moss on a tree in Oregon. I was like, oh my gosh, I've never seen the color green like I'm looking at right now. I just took 10,000 pictures and I'd never been in snow. I'd never gone through ice. I'd never experienced all of these things. And we lived true life free. And that is when I learned the appreciation for gypsies. The gypsies, yeah. I used yeah, to yeah, think 100%. were weird people. They're smart people. <laughs> They're they know how to live life. They yeah. live life. They don't work to live. Mm. That's amazing. Come on, come on. So- speaking my language right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, wait till you hear what we're doing in June. No. <laughs> oh, I know I'm going to be asking about this. <laughs> so obviously, and you know, the book is right behind you. I have the book here as well. For those of you who have not read it, Momentum Makers, it has some phenomenal golden nuggets in it. And a lot of those are from you. And um, I really appreciate you taking the time to write this. And I, 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 we're going to leave it in the link in the description below for people to be able to pick up this book. Um, you guys can also get it, I think, on ebook as well, not just a hard copy. Mm-hmm. Um, are they going to be making an audible version of this book at all? Do you it know? is already available. Yes, it is. Okay, excellent. Perfect. So that'll be great. Um, but, you know, with that being said, I mean, obviously, you are so diverse in your wisdom and your personal development. What are some other books that you might be able to recommend outside of this one? Like, what are some other ones that you would recommend people to be maybe kind of experimenting with or checking out? Well, I 
I coach a lot of people and when they're getting started in this industry, the first books that I tell them to, that I start asking, I start asking by layers. Have you read Rich yeah. Dad, Poor Dad? If that, then I know where I'm starting, right? Because a lot of 100%. people say no, you know, they've either, mm. when, when I would go speak in a big conference with thousands of people, the way that I can tell who I'm talking to, who here has, has read Rich Dad, Poor Dad? Yeah. You know, yeah. most people who here has heard of it, and then I have the, I have them raise their hand. I said, leave your hand up if you've read it and put your hand down if you've heard of it, but haven't wow. read it, you know, and that tells me what my audience is that I'm listening to. So that's the first layer. And then I go right into the secret. I'm all, I want you to read the secret and I want, or I want you to watch the secret or read the yeah. secret or listen to the secret. Yeah. And I want you to do it over and over and over again. I, I used to have a, a DVD tower that burned six DVDs and I would order 300 DVDs at a time and I would just burn 24 seven DVDs. I gave, I had 16,000 clients in my salon. I had yeah, 42,000 people on my team. I gave every single person that walked in my life that was in wow. three feet around me that I said, this will change your life if you will go stick it in and watch it. And I, I mean, it was, I created a ripple effect for years that went from that thing. Mm -hmm. And so the, the secret and GoPro, Definitely mm -hmm. GoPro by Eric yeah, Worre is another one. And, you know, I love beach money, Jordan Adler, you know, beach mm -hmm. money and better than beach money. I'm very yeah. blessed to be in that book as well. And, you know, those books are really the core foundation to learning how to understand and believe and to dream again and how to manifest and how to change your mindset in what mm -hmm. is possible because we're so limited in our belief because most of us were raised like I was where money doesn't grow on trees. Right. You know, and if right. it's too good to be true, you better run the other way mm -hmm. where my daughter's raised on money does grow on trees and we're going to teach you how to plant the seeds. The seeds are people. Mm -hmm. And if it looks too good to be true, you better grab a notepad and a pen, sit down, ask a lot of questions and take it. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> This That's is so fantastic. Yeah. You are such an interesting person. And I mean that as an absolute compliment. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I get yeah. told that a lot. <laughs> I am so glad. I am so glad. So with that being said, um, when was the last time that you were outside of your comfort zone? Um, I'm When you get to be the type of person that we are, you don't go a day without saying, did I reach my comfort zone today? Mm -hmm. You you Because when you learn that all success is created outside your comfort zone, and when you've gone through hell and back so many times as I have, you've learned that all greatness exists on the other side of the comfort zone. So it's something you become addicted to. I'm addicted mm, to on. it. Come I on. like that feeling that when you get that feeling in your stomach, that is telling you that you are bridging that place and where you've never been before because the, com the uncomfortable feeling comes from something in the future towards something you have not already accomplished. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so you can't have fear about something you've already done. You have fear about something you haven't done yet. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. That's so good. I do want to share one other piece that you could crop Please. and put in back in the yes life part. Yeah, sure. I want to share, I want to share some yes life experiences. Um, things that people don't think about, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, eight years ago, my sister, unfortunately, passed away in a very bad way. And I was the only family member that could sit by her bedside for the seven days that it took for her body to shut down. That's a yes life. Mm. My parents are now elders. I get to, my dad wasn't in my life when I was a kid. He came into my life as an adult and now I get to be his caregiver because I can. I get wow. to go take wow. my dad to Costco and I get to watch my daughter do all of her first. Yeah. I get to be present in my child's life. When people call us and say, hey, we're going to Florida this weekend. You want to come with us? We can say yes. Right. When We don't have to say, no, I need to check and see if I have any vacation days or I have to ask my boss if I can get time off. It's the ability to say, what, yes, I'll go help you do your fundraiser. Just, just last month from San Diego to Montana, we helped our friend move by driving her humongous whatever 26 foot truck that was full of all of her furniture to Montana for her because she couldn't afford to have drive uh, movers move her. So we did it just because, and we got yeah. to do it as a family and then go to Yellowstone and fly our daughter out there to meet us and go take a vacation and go see that part of the country. That's what life is meant for living. Mm. And so do you want to know what we're doing in June? I so <laughs> do. Please do tell. So with this whole shutdown that's happening. Yes, I'm here, ready. Please. Yes. With the, 
with the whole shutdown that's happened, it's pretty much destroying San Diego. We moved to San Diego to live in paradise and it's no longer right. paradise. It's just sad what's happening to these businesses. Mm-hmm. And it's going to take many years for this city to come back. Yeah. And so we are in the process now of moving. Um, we are to move my mother-in-law out here to live with us as well. So my dad and now my mother-in-law live out here. And so we're moving them this next month into a beautiful new senior living development that's just opening that took four years on the waiting list and then in june our lease is up and we're going for six weeks to just go to like costa rica and thailand and be nomads and just go yeah be gone if we don't have to take the shot yeah <laughs> oh yeah fair enough that's a whole nother conversation in yeah. right. <laughs> that sounds oh, amazing oh that's, that's gonna so be good. so much fun uh, and thank you for sharing like all these examples of the yes life. I really appreciate that. Absolutely. There are it's things we huge. don't think of at your age. You guys don't mm. think about these things. You don't think about our life is so short that, that mm, our yeah. true living window is really only 30 years. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's funny. I don't mean to interrupt you. It's no, just, it's, fine. you know, it's when you say that stuff, it kind of reminds me too of like, even being a parent, like, you know, I, I say no to my daughter, but I want to say yes. You know what I mean? And I want, because I want to instill that in her growing up that you can say yes. Yeah. You don't have to always respond or, you know, go with yo, with no. So I appreciate you sharing that because that kind of hit home for me. And with I that let, being said. I laid in bed for right. eight months to have my daughter. Yeah. I was, I had, from the second I was pregnant, they took me in for surgery and sewed me up and said, don't get up. Eight months. Wow. Mm-hmm. You need time and money to be wow. able to do that. Yeah. That is something. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That's amazing. Yeah. That's, That's amazing. You're like a super yeah. mom. <laughs> um, we need to have a follow-up podcast serious. here. I know. I just like, I, no kidding. Like I just, as you talk, I'm like, oh my gosh, let's go down this trail because I want to hear all about it. Um, but I guess with that being said, being the amazing mom that you are, the amazing family woman that you are, how do you balance all that stuff out? How do you balance I'm, I'm life, really glad business? you're asking me that. And, and well, this so is a hard, to me, it's an excuse people use to quit you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. And I almost did when, mm-hmm. when I was five months into my network marketing journey, I was going to quit because I had a husband who at the time did not believe in what I was doing because we needed to save the burning ship, you know, at the time. Mm-hmm. And, um, I had a, mm-hmm. she was gosh, a baby. So she's 17 now it's been 13, 12, 13 years. So she was like four years old and she was missing mom and crying, you know, mommy, mommy. And I've got a husband who doesn't believe I've got heat. Now he's jealous because I'm out doing all this and not home for the first time. Right. So there's this whole dynamic. And so I said, I can't do this. I need to quit. And my trainer at the time said to me, I know why you want to quit. And I'm like, why? He's like, cause you're not committed. And I'm like, what the heck are you talking about? I'm not committed. I'm not even home. He's like, you have to be committed to the process. Like you're committed to being a parent. Mm. And right then it hit me and I went home mm. and I made yeah. a game plan with my family and I sat down and I made this vision board for my daughter. And I said, tell mommy things that you want that you, you know, Disneyland and princesses and all these things. And I put them all up and I says, baby, when mommy's gone, I want you to know that I'm gone because I'm working to get you these things. And I said, every time I'm gone, I'm going to bring you back something off of here. And it changed. She never cried again. She understood. So I tell, cause I do a lot of coaching on this topic. I even have a whole lesson on this topic. So men create something about your wife and help her to see that you're doing it for this reason. Women, if your men want a new pair of golf clubs or something, you know, something they want, make a vision board about things that they want and let them understand that you're out to make these things happen. Same with your children to let your children know what you're doing things for. Make a vision board together. When you go places, come back with one little thing. Like I used to come back from airports and bring one little airport toy you know, one little airport toy to my daughter to, and she, I would tell her where it was from and we would put it on the map. She's got one of those maps of all the things where you scratch off the thing, you know, of all the places she's been or where her toys are from, you know, things like that and make it about the, the why the people, why you're doing it. And then they can't be mad at you if you're doing something for them, but they got to be aware of that. Bring them in on it. That. And ask for permission. Here's another thing. Ask for permission. Say, can I have a 90 day window where you guys are going to cook and you're going to clean and you're going to do the laundry 
while I'm out doing this for 90 days. And then we're going to sit down. And as a family, we're going to talk about what mommy's learned or what I've learned, what has grown, what has been earned. And then we'll take it. We'll make a new decision then and take it in bite-sized pieces. Cause the only way to eat that elephant is one bite at a time. So take that one bite and talk about one bite at a time. Mm. That's fantastic. So practical. A lot of people, when they answer these questions, tend to go very theoretical and off the deep end. Time Uh, block, time block and make sure if you have children, mm -hmm. it's proven that 30 minutes on the floor with your child Mm -hmm. is more than what a stay-at-home mom gives their child every day. Set your phone next to them and tell them, okay, it's your turn. I'm not answering my phone. And when it rings, say, sorry, voicemail. Sorry, it's so it's, it's little Johnny's turn right now. And let them see that you are giving them your time and then ask for the time in return. Wow. Beautiful. That's so good. I'm going to so take practical. all of what you said and put that to practice. That's really good. A- absolutely. So practical. That's fantastic. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So that uh, works a lot with dealing with family. Um, when it comes to creating the circle, so I'm going to take this in a different direction. When it comes to creating your inner circle, um, what, how do you go about that? What does that process look like for you personally? Well, I'm a big, I, I don't know if you've ever heard of the company Send Out Cards. I use their product like crazy. Mm-hmm. I am, I, I don't know if you've ever seen this Threedom thing, but it's, you're the one in the I middle. Am. <laughs> yeah. You're the one in the middle. It's one dot in the middle and then it's That's three, awesome. it's three branches, you know, so you go tell three and then it's yeah. those three telling three and those mm. three telling three. And it shows the layers of how it grows out to be, you know, and that's how freedom is reached through three by three. Yeah. And so what I teach people is how to turn your inner circle into this size. And wow. so how, to, cause the more you can grow your inner circle, that that's the course that I teach is called master the art of human connections. And it's teaching you how to master the art of human connections. So you can attract an abundance of opportunities and referrals and friends and love into your life, how to tap into those relationships. And I truly give all credit to send out cards in their system that enables me to be able to touch a larger circle of people with a piece of my heart. Mm -hmm. I put a piece of my heart on a card and I can send it out to 5,000 people so that they know that I'm thinking about them and that I care about them and putting a smile on them so that I'm staying heart centered instead of back of mind or front of mind, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the more you bring that type of love, the the bigger your inner circle grows. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's so good. And, you know, I mean that, yeah, that's so, that's so true. And are you like intentional about like the people that you're able to be vulnerable with in that process as well? Or do you, are you just allow yourself to be vulnerable with anybody and everybody, or how does that work for you? One thing you'll learn about me is you're going to see me like I am. I'm going to, I tell, I, I'm not ashamed of the fact that I'm a high school dropout. I can't tell you 10 of the 52 states or if there's 50 or 52 cards in a deck. And I don't know North from South and East from West. And I'm all, and I need navigation to get my daughter to school. You know, I don't, I'm real and yeah, I don't, awesome. and I tell everyone my, I have this incredible marriage for 24 years. We've been together, but he's my third husband and he was 21 and I was 30 when we met, you know, I tell it all because yeah. it gives people, you know, to be able to see that I'm not educated. I didn't come from, you know, silver spoon family that was handed someone. I bring a lot of right. people hope. That's why yeah. I'm real yeah. in my yeah. life stories. And we seriously appreciate this so much about you. It's mm. wonderful. Um, so now you talk about this concept also about um, how to live above the line or below the line. And can you kind of just give us a, like an idea of what that means and the difference between the two? Yes. I wish I would have grabbed my little card to show you what it means. Mm. It's, a, it's my first lesson in my coaching program that I teach. It's above and below the line where when you're above the line is when you see the beauty of things and that's where joy and happiness lives. When you're below the line, that's where the negativity lives. That's mm. where you see the muck. That's yeah. where you see the, the, the bad in people and the bad in things. And when you learn how to live above the line is when you, you don't ha- you're so high that you don't see the negativity in things. Because what we focus on is what we get more of. And so when you focus on things that are of abundance and joy and happiness and peace and prosperity and beauty and Mm -hmm. learn to speak from the positive instead of the negative, you Mm -hmm. know, don't, don't tell your kids what you don't want them to do. Tell them what you want them to do. Right. And so when you, when you speak to the universe or you speak about yourself, 
speak about the things that are great. Don't speak about the things that are not great. And mm -hmm. when you do that, you can guide, the universe will guide you. You'll be able to guide because you do get, when you tell your kids, you never pick up your shoes. You're always leaving your shoes in the living room. Mm -hmm. Why should I pick them up? Right. Mm -hmm. I'm always leaving them in the living room where when you say, thank you so much for picking your shoes up, you make mommy so happy. They're wow. going to pick them up again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like you're giving them an identity to mm -hmm. some degree with that. That's, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Super, super good. Love wow. that. Uh, so, so I have this great card. I'll actually send it to you guys in the mail. Oh, please. Love love that. Absolutely People have them hanging that. all over their walls because yeah. <laughs> they're, they're visual indicators of above them, below the line. Oh. I would absolutely love that. I'd literally, I'll hang it right here. That'd yeah. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I get on a lot of Zooms and they're hanging right behind, you know, right yeah. there. That'd be fantastic. Um, so we only have two questions left, which is really sad for me um, because this, <laughs> yeah. has been, this has been so much fun. Um, so this question, we ask this question at the end of it, towards the end of every interview. It's going to sound like it's way out in left field and that's because it is. Um, so answer it however you want. So if you were on your deathbed right now and your friends and family are around, what is the last piece of advice that you'd like to leave them with? That their perceptions of the way that people feel about them is not real. It happens wow. all the time. I would have talks with them about how if you think someone's mad at you, they're not. It's a perception in your mind. Pick up the phone and call wow. them. You know, my... I, I use the story a lot of how my sister and I were not speaking for the last 10 years of her life. And then, wow. you know, by me being able to spend the last days of her life by her bedside, if I could mm. take it back and change anything, it would be for us to have the conversation about why we were not speaking because it was all a perception in our mind. Re wow. Nothing matters more than relationships. Nothing. Yeah. That's amazing. That what was also the fastest piece. answer we've ever gotten. Yeah. <laughs> I no, so that, appreciate that. That was so it's, perfect. It's a constant inside me with yeah. people that, it, it, and, and I think it's because I'm 53 and dealing with my elder parents, I'm really, you guys can't even relate to this because you're still so young. It won't hit you till you're something about being 50. Mm -hmm. You're now on forget about the body that you wanted, that you tried to have for 25 years, you know, forget it. And, and now it's about things that are more important. It's about time. Mm -hmm. And then you yeah. watch your elders get old. And the only thing that matters in their life is love and health. That's it. Yeah. Love. Somebody love me still yeah. and, and have good health to live another day. That's it. Which are two of the most important things, period. Mm -hmm. I mean, like that makes so much sense. So Gabe, that's what we need to start focusing on is only love and, and health. Love and that's yeah. it. And, <laughs> and, it's, and then we're up with you above the line. And you well, know, it's true because I, yeah, I have two parents. My mother's 85, my dad's 87. My mother worked so hard at being a grandma and ha building yeah. a relationship with the kids and the children. My parents divorced young, and my dad went off to sow his oats and lived a pretty sweet little life of sowing oats. But today wow. he has no relationship with his grandkids, and he's a very lonely yeah. man because he doesn't have relationships. And now he regrets, he regrets that he didn't take the time to build relationships where my mom has her phone rings all day long and she's got, you know, abundance of relationships because she worked on that. She taught us kids when we were little to sit and write those thank you cards and write those birthday cards yeah. and take a gift everywhere you go and send someone a compliment and put a smile on your face and pass it along every single day. And so I teach our daughter that, you know, yeah. and I get to witness what it's already doing in her life at only 17 years old. Wow. You're so gifted. Seriously. Yeah. You really yeah. are. And I, and I, I really appreciate everything that you brought to the table. And I mean, it just, it, it's so unfortunate. This is our last question, but um, it's not an unfortunate question. And that is what is next? What is next in your life? Can you share with us how are you exiting 2020 into 2021? Well, 2021 is going to be a humongous year because it's going to be the year of the rebuild for many. And I truly believe that I was primed and seasoned my whole life in order to be here to help these people mm. because I've crashed and burned so many times. I mean, I'm like a master at going broke and rebuilding overnight because I've, and I've learned so many lessons from it. And now I get to teach these lessons to others. I get to teach people why they go broke and how to prevent it from happening again and how to prepare for the next big storm that's coming your way. Because yeah. in the end of the day, it's money. You need to yeah. make money. You yeah. got to learn how to make money. It doesn't, 
people who say money doesn't buy happiness, they've just never had money, you know? That's their <laughs> yeah, excuse. Right? I've right. had both and I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, it's true. I agree with you hundred percent. And so mine is positioning myself to figure out how to get in front of these people so that I can help them. You know, that's my mm-hmm. biggest thing. And it's so easy. Reinventing your life is so easy when you learn how to do it. That's amazing. So I want to make sure that all of our viewers that are listening to this podcast, um, uh, could you just share your website? Uh, with yeah, everyone? absolutely. Just some more it's info. really hard. Okay, it's go really hard. It darlad.com <laughs> boom got it and we'll make sure for the shortcut you guys can we'll leave the link in the description for you to check out darla and her amazing wisdom and her company and all the different things that she's doing um, around the world and so we just we really appreciate your time this thank you so, so much, much i appreciate you guys you guys are amazing if i can ever do anything to help get you in front of you know whatever you need i'm i'm I have learned become resourceful. Get connected with people that are <laughs> professionals and love helping people. And then there you go. You've got an audience. Awesome. That's perfect. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you so much.